Sabbath day. You know, sisters and brothers, this is a lesson that the whole world need because there's a condition that's going to come up on this world that's called a great tribulation. And if you don't understand this, you're going to have a religious organization Telling you, come to us and you're going to be protected. All you need to do is receive this mark in your forehead or in your right hand. Everything is going to be all right. Because it's going to be some tough times, sister and brother. In fact, it's going to be a time like there's never been since there was a world. But if you are a servant of God, you can miss this, and you're not going to be taken off this earth, but you can miss it. In fact, the title of this lesson is The Wilderness, a place of safety during the Great Tribulation. The Wilderness, a place of safety during the Great Tribulation. Now, sisters and brothers, this, this is going to be carried out by Satan and his minions, but this condition is being brought up on the world by God. The reason is because this man is so entrenched in paganism, so entrenched in evil, the Lord have two choices, to slap him back into reality or do like he did the first time, drown everybody. So he said he wasn't going to do that. So this great tribulation is going to be brought up on this earth by the so-called holiest man on the planet. So when you turn to your God, the one that's representing your God is whooping your head, then that's going to give you some food for thought. It's going to be a terrible time. And the Lord give us signs and let us know where to look and when to look. So we're going to start this in Matthew, the 24th chapter. Because Jesus is the one that's telling us about this, sisters and brothers. Because he wants us to know. That's why the Lord said, call the end from the beginning. He can tell you everything that's going to happen on this earth and what you do. He tell us through his prophecy. Then he tell us how to escape it. So the thing that's going to get you out of trouble is knowledge and righteousness. You have to know about it then you have to be righteous enough for the Lord to allow you to take advantage of this great escape because it's going to be a time, sisters and brothers, that you ain't going to be safe nowhere. Having a lot of money means nothing because it's going to be a time when it's going to, if you don't have this mark, which is called the mark of the beast, in your forehead or in your right hand, you say, well, ain't nobody going to mock me. Yeah, they do it to you every Ash Wednesday. Preparing you for what is to come. And if you don't have this mark, you could have $100 in your pocket, and you won't be able to buy a hot dog. 
the world don't have a clue of what's coming. We're going to start this in Matthew 24 and verse 1. This is when Jesus, this is a conversation between Jesus and his apostles. 24 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. Uh huh. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Go ahead. Verily I say unto you, there should not be left here one stone upon another that should not be thrown down. Now they was telling him about the beauty of the temple. And he let them, letting them know that this thing is going to be towed down. Not going to be one stone left upon another. Then they wanted to know some other things. Go ahead and read. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Go ahead. Tell us, when shall these things be? Uh huh. And what should be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now they ask him more than just when the temple is going to be towed down. They want to know when it's going to be towed down, which that happened in 7 AD. Then he said, a sign of your coming and the end of the world. Because when the Lord comes, the world is going to end the way you know it. But it's not going to end like uh, all over with. Because the Lord is going to come and he's going to put his stamp on this world. Hear people talking about the new world order. This is the only new world order that's coming. And it's going to be brought forth by the Lord. So when they asked the question, the Lord answered them. Go ahead and read. And Jesus answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Take heed that no man deceive you. First thing he said, take heed that no man deceive you. This is a warning that the whole world have ignored. What is it? Go ahead and read. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. For many shall come in my name, saying that I am Christ. Go ahead and read. And shall deceive many. And shall deceive many. Look, sisters and brothers, this is something that if people have really paid some attention to what Jesus said here and this warning that he gave, you would look at a whole lot of ministers with the eye of suspect. <laughs> then you would write down what they say and then you would get to the, open this Bible and see if it really says that. Mm -hmm. He didn't warn you about the street hustler or the pimp. He warned you about the people in the pool pit. Because you ain't never seen nobody walk up to you and say, I'm sticking you up in the name of Jesus. <laughs> this is a warning that nobody pays attention to, sisters and brothers. Nobody. And when you warn people about it, oh, see, that's why I don't like it, old Tracy. He like to talk, talk about preachers. No, I talk to books. If it fall on a preacher, it fall on a preacher. Right. So he said, many going to come in my name, saying that I'm Christ, and shall deceive many. Skip down to verse 14, and go ahead. And his gospel <coughs> of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. He said, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the, all the world as a witness against all nations. Pay attention to this. Go ahead. And then shall the end come. Then shall the end come. Why is the end not here if the gospel that we have been getting in the name of Jesus is the gospel? Mm. Look at all of these years. Mm. Look at all of these years. I mean, the whole world have the same gospel. Yes, sir. Why is it then that the end have not come? Because that is not the gospel that Jesus is talking mm. about. Yes, sir. The evidence stands for itself. Go ahead and read. We therefore shall see the abomination of desolation uh -huh. spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Now, most people have been in church all their life. They don't know, have a clue of who the abomination of desolation is. Let alone the holy place. But Jesus gave you at that as a major warning. So whoso read it, let him understand. In other words, you better understand this. Right. Because if you don't, the consequences are going to be severe. Go ahead. Then let them which be in Judea <coughs> flee into the mountain. Uh-huh. Now and let them that be in Judea flee into the mountain. And it tell you a whole lot of other places that you need to flee from. Right. So this is a time you got to flee, sisters and brothers. Even wherever you are on this planet, if you got some knowledge, you're going to flee to this place that's called 
the wilderness. No matter where you are, the Lord's going to provide. Just like when he brought Israel out of Egypt. They didn't have a clue. Or who could have possibly told them that the Lord was going to divide a sea? Just make them an opening in it and they can walk across dry. In other words, they walk across instead of mud. They're kicking up dust. Who could possibly have told you that God was going to do that? Right. But he did it. And that let me know, I don't have to worry about a passport. I don't have to worry about airline or boat ticket money. All I got to do is know the sign and be right enough for the Lord to let me escape. Yes, sir. So he said, this thing here, when you see him standing in the holy place, you has best Flee, because some big drama's going to come on. What verse was that? That was in 16. Skip down to verse 21 and go ahead. But Why then, is it that you need to flee? Go ahead. For then shall be great tribulation, uh -huh. such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Now these great tribulations, these are that time. So you have never had a time this bad. And you will never have another time this bad. That means that's bad time. Y'all yeah. know some ugly stuff going on on this earth, don't you? All kind of slaughter, ethnic cleansing. I mean, whole nations almost wiped out. Whole people almost wiped out. I mean, killed by the thousands. This time it's going to be worse than that. In fact, it's so bad until the Lord said, ain't going to be no other time like this here. He said, when you see that, you better run because it's I'm going to tell you something. The Lord is going to have to do something because this man is getting ready to kill everybody. Yep. Go ahead and read. And except those days should be shortened. And except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. There should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. But for the elect's sake, who are the elect? Those of us that have this truth system, brother. Mm -hmm. Israel and all the ones that become spiritually Israel. For our sake, he is not going to let this man destroy all flesh. When this was written, sisters and brothers, there was not a weapon big enough to destroy all flesh. Mm. Now everybody got it. America got it. Russia got it. North Korea got it. Israel got it. India got it. In fact, I can name, and all of them are so bad until they would destroy all flesh. This is a nuclear weapon, sisters and brothers. But the Lord said, for the elect's sake, I am going to make this thing short. Sure. He ain't going to let this man destroy his creation. Mm -hmm. But he said, but when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation stand in the holy place, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, whoso read it, let him understand. But a lot of people wouldn't go to this because they said, we New Testament Christians. The Old Testament's been done away with. For those of us that read all the Bible, we know when Jesus says, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, he is telling us, you better go and read what Daniel said. Because yes, Daniel didn't write the stuff for nothing. So we're going to go into the seventh chapter of Daniel and look at it. Because these things, sisters and brothers, the Lord put here for our consumption, and he Put it here so we will be able to get enough knowledge and understanding to work out our own salvation. Oh, we have to do this. Ain't nobody else going to do it for us. You have a lot of ministers. Tell me, you know, uh, 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 you listen to me. I'm going to tell you what you listen to. You listen to what this brother read. Yes, sir. That's why we have a reader. Because if you don't listen to what's written, you got your problem. Daniel's 9 and 7. This is talking about the nation. 9 and 1, 7 rather than 1. Daniel 7 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Uh -huh. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Go ahead. Daniel spake and said, I saw my vision by night. And behold, the four winds of the heaven strolled upon the great sea. Uh huh. And the four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. He said, Now look, 
This dream I had, I saw four winds of heaven. That's why I got the title of the book that the Lord calls me to write. They're strolling up on the sea. That means they come up from among, they was over the people, and they come up from the sea, and they was all different. These four winds was four great beasts. Who were these? They represented the Gentile kingdom sisters and brothers that rule this entire world by themselves. The first one was Babylon. The second one was Medo-Persia. The third one was the Greeks. And the fourth one was the Roman Empire. Those are the only empires that rule this entire planet by themselves. That's on record anyway that man can read about. But we want to deal with the fourth one, because that's the one that this abomination of desolation is going to come out of. This person that the Lord hates, that's going to destroy at will. Yes, sir. Skip down to verse 7, then go ahead. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. Uh -huh. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. Go ahead. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. Now this is the Roman Empire, sisters and brothers. This is the fourth one. The Roman Empire came and the Roman Empire is supposed to rise and fall ten times. It has risen and fallen nine times. We have a lesson to show you that. Or either if you don't want a, re a, a lesson, you can buy the book, The Four Winds of Heaven, and it breaks that down. We are looking for the tent horn right now. The tent resurrection of the Roman Empire. See, God give you things among men because his business is man. And this was a terrible beast. He didn't even know what to name this beast. He named them all after some beast in his creation, but he couldn't even name this beast. Go ahead and read. Hey, I considered the horns and behold... There came up among them another little horn. Uh -huh. Behold, there were three of the first horn plucked up by the root. Go ahead. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, uh -huh. and the mouth speaking great things. Now, this is the religious horn. The rest of them was king, but this is the religious horn. This is one that's sitting over there. Uh, he might not be the one that's sitting in Vatican City right now, but he, that seat over there in Vatican City is the seat that he is going to come out of. He had eyes like a man. He had mouth that spoke great things. Yes, sir. And we have a lesson to show you that he uprooted three other horns because they wouldn't go along with it. So this horn we're going to look at. Skip down to verse 19. Verse 19. And go ahead. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast. As I want to know about this fourth beast, go ahead and read the Roman Empire. Go ahead. Which was diverse from all the others. Uh -huh. Exceeding dreadful. Go ahead. Whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, breaking pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. So this was a bad one, sisters and brothers. Not only did the Roman Empire knock, uh, knock the world off physically, but out of the Roman Empire came this modern day Christianity, sisters mm -hmm. and brothers. Going to heaven come from Rome. Mm -hmm. Dead people looking down on you smiling come from Rome. Satan in the, in the ground and a whole barbecue and people in hell come from Rome. In fact, tomorrow, Sunday, come from Rome. In fact, it was the Roman emperor that forced the whole world to observe it. Yep. It was a terrible beast. Not only did they destroy you physically, they destroyed you mentally and gave you a religion that has been to you down through every generation from the time that it came into existence. Sister and brother, that's why it was such a terrible beast. Skip down to verse 23. Verse 23 and go here. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. History will tell you that's wrong. Go ahead and read. We shall be diverse from all kingdoms. And shall devour the whole earth. Uh -huh. And shall tread it down and break it in pieces. That's what they did. Go ahead. And the ten horns out of his kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. And another shall rise after them. Uh -huh. And he shall be diverse from the first. And he shall subdue three kings. Now this little king ain't going to come up. And these three nations that he uh, uh, subdued was the Ashagot, the Vandalel, and the Hurali. 
But then that's another lesson mm -hmm. because they would not let this guy rule over. So he got the rest of the forces together and they was terminated. You don't see no country that's called Ostrogoths, do you? Mm -mm. You don't see, but you know, you got the art all around. They call it Gothic art. Mm -hmm. And you don't see the Vandales. But you got a word that they're assigned to. These are some barbaric people. They vandalize everything. That's where the word Vandale come from. Mm -hmm. And the Hurulai, I don't know what they left. All I know is they ain't here no more. <laughs> Go ahead and read. What verse? 25. Uh huh. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Yes, sir. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Uh huh. And think to change times and laws. Go ahead. And they shall be given into his hand into a time and times and the dividing of time. That's three and a half years. We already been on us down through the nations. But there's a time, this great tribulation is going to be three and a half years, sisters and brothers. Now, he's already changing the times and the laws. Mm -hmm. God's days start at sundown. The evening and the morning is the first day. But he said 1201 is the first day. Right. God said the seventh day is his Sabbath. But then he said the first day of the week is the Christian Sabbath. Right. <laughs> God said he's going to put his kingdom on his earth. He said, uh-uh, the kingdom is going to be in heaven. Right. And I can go on and on and on. He didn't change the times and the law. But there's going to come a time when he's going to be on this earth and he is going to make war with the saints and he's going to do it for a time, which is one year, mm. times where the plural represent three years and a half is a half a year, sister, bro. three and a half years. Go ahead and read. That was in the 25. Now, let's go further then. Let's go into Revelation 11 chapter. And we're going to look at this to show you. This guy going to be over this world, and he's going to make war with the saints, and he's going to win. That's why I said, if you are a saint, the only safe place for you on this planet will be in the wilderness. <coughs> Some preachers tell me where the Lord going to rapture us off to church off just before the great tribulation. I'm going to tell you something. You believe that. And you're going to find yourself going eyeball to eyeball right. with this great trauma. It's going to happen, sisters and brothers. Revelation 11 chapter. Now this 11 chapter is talking about the Lord's temple, not the one that's going to, this abomination is going to set in. But it's something else we want to show you here. 11 and 1. Go ahead and read. And that was giving me a read like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God uh -huh. and the altar and them that worship therein. Now, this is not the temple that the abomination is going to sit in. This is the temple that Jesus is going to be in. That's why it's the temple of God and the altar of them that worship therein. This is the temple that Zerubbabel is going to be. Yes, sir. Because the Lord is going to put something to make sure that this temple, that the people over there that call themselves going to, be, going to build, it's not going to be on the same spot where Jesus' temple is going to be. Right. He left the courtway to them. Go yes, ahead sir. and read. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out uh -huh. and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. That's times, times, and a half. Forty-two months, three and a half years, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. This is the time of the great tribulation. You've had people teaching all over the world that the Great Tribulation is going to be seven years. That is a ploy from Satan. Because you know what's going to happen when you see this guy go over there and take his seat in the temple? You're going to say, well, oh, I can relax. <laughs> I ain't got to worry about it. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And when I get close to, when it's three and close to the three and a half years, be over with, then I'm going to flee. <laughs> Too late. You got it. He said, what is he going to do? So he's going to give it to the Gentiles. Yep. And they are going to tread the holy city. But you see, well, why is that, Brother Boy? Because these people are going to build a temple in Jerusalem. And what's going to happen is, this guy going to come over there with ten armies. And they're going to deal with the people over there that call themselves up. And they're going to set Papa out of Rome directly in that temple. That's when the abomination of desolation will be in the holy place. And they ain't going to be able to do nothing about it. Go what verse? That was in the two. Go ahead. 
And I will give power unto my two witnesses. Uh -huh. And they shall prophesy a thousand, two hundred and three score days, uh -huh. clothed in sackcloth. Now, how long is a thousand, two hundred and three score days? Three and a half, and a half years. years. Why is the Lord going to have two witnesses here with power? We're not going to deal with what they're dealing with. They're going to have the power to bring a drought. They're going to have power to cause fire to come down from heaven. Why is it that the Lord going to have two men with all this power? Because he's going to have to balance this false prophet or this abomination. Because the abomination is going to cause fire to come down from heaven. Mm -hmm. The abomination is going to make a statue. I'm pretty sure it's a granite, something made out of rock. Make it walk and talk. So if the Lord don't have the power, have some righteous brothers here to come back this evil, then everybody go over to the uh, abomination. Yeah, they will. So the Lord always have a balance. Always you have a choice. Go with these or go with that. Right. That's the way the, op the Lord operates. So now you don't have to get that mark. Believe what these two guys are telling you. Even if you fall, if you find yourself out outside of the uh, a place of safety in the wilderness, even if you fall, the Lord going to raise you up. But if you receive that mark, you're going to get cut off. Mm -hmm. He's going to give you the balance, sisters and brothers. Now let's go and look at the starting of this thing. Let's go into Revelation, the 13th chapter. See, most people don't know about this because the preachers keep them out of Revelation and out of the Old Testament. <laughs> yeah, they do. That's where you're walking around like somebody that took a, a, a knife or something and cut your eyes right out your head. You're blind as a, as a real child. And he's dead, so you know he's blind. Right. Revelation 13 and 1. Now here come this fourth beast. He's showing you how he's coming. Because he said, first he had ten horns. That means, uh, 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 and, and three of them was plucked up. But the seven that was left tried to resuscitate this beast, trying to bring him. And the last one that we're waiting on right now, he is going to bring this thing back together, sisters and brothers. And he's going to bring it back together. And he's going to be king over all the Western Europe. And he's going to have them ten nations that's going to give their power to him. So remember, we saw four beasts come up, didn't we? Yeah, we did. And one of them had ten, uh, and one had ten horns. And that one with the ten horns had one head. That was the Roman head. But now, here come the resurrected four beasts. Resurrected that tent time. 13 and 1. Go ahead. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. Uh -huh. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea. This is one beast. Not four. A beast rise up out of the sea. Go ahead and read. Having seven heads and ten horns. Uh -huh. And upon his horns ten crowns. Now this beast had seven heads and ten horns. Where did the seven heads come from? First head was a Babylonian head. Second was a Medo-Persian head. And then you had four heads because Alexander the Great died young and his generals took over. So there was four heads, which made, made six heads, sisters and brothers. And all his generals rep that represented him, they ran the Greek Empire before it disintegrated. And then you had the Roman head. That was the seven heads, sisters and brothers. So who are we talking about? All of the Gentile nations down into the resurrected Roman Empire. Or either you can call it Babylon the Great. And what it had, it had ten horns. And each one of these horns had a crown on them. That means that each one of these was a head of state, a president or a prime minister or whatever he called himself. Mm -hmm. He was the leader of his nation. But they're all going to give their power to one man. Go ahead and read. In of 13. And upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Uh -huh. And the dragon gave him his power in his seat and great authority. Now you notice this had a part of each one of them beasts if we had read them all. But he said a dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. Who is the dragon, sisters and brothers? Satan the devil. 
You know, I have a little bit of information that the whole world don't know. In all of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, Satan is the only one that said he wants to go to heaven. Right. So now, if you think you're going to heaven and that's where you want to go, then who are you following? Amen. It is so simple. Yes, sir. I got to tell people all the time, I wouldn't ask you, wouldn't put the burden on you to find it twice in the Bible. Find it one time where God said he's going to take us to heaven. And everything they read, I said, read a little more. Oh, it's not like that. Of course it's not. You have to read. So he got his power, see, and great authority from Satan. So that means that whatever he do, he's going to do what Satan tells him yes, to sir. do. Go ahead and read. And I saw one of his head as it were wounded to death. Go ahead. And his deadly wound was healed. Uh -huh. And all the world wanted after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. So that deadly wound that was healed, that head that was healed, that's the Roman head. And so all the world wanted after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon that gave power to the beast. What you mean, Brother Bill, all the world wanted after the beast? Look at what you have. Around Christmas time, what nation is it on the planet that don't have Christmas trees scattered all in the household? Everybody is talking Easter. All of them are observing Sunday. So when you worship the beast, you worship the one that gave the power to the beast. Satan the devil, sister and brother. That's the dragon. But the whole world is asleep on him. That's why what this Lord is going to do with this great tribulation is going to be a marvelous thing. He's going to bring your pain from the one that you think is the holiest person on the planet. And so what you think about that? Right. Finish that verse. Go ahead. Middle of four. And they worshiped the beast, uh -huh. saying, who is likened to the beast, uh -huh. who is able to make war with them. Yeah, and that's what they're going to say at that time, because that European common market is going to be a powerful nation. Powerful nation. You know why? Because of the whole Western bloc led by ten nations, and they're all moving with one mind. And they all have combined armies. That's going to be a huge army. And everybody's going to wonder after them. And they're going to ask the question, who can make war with all of this big, with the whole of Western Europe? Right. Go ahead and read. And there was given it to him a mouth, speaking great things. That's that little horn now. Go ahead and read. And blasphemy. Uh-huh. And power was given it to him to continue 40 and two months. Now you notice how the Lord always let you know that this thing is going to be three and a half years, yes, 40 sir. and two months. The Lord knew that that beast power is going to put that power thing out there that this tribulation is going to come, but it ain't going to be but seven, but it's going to be seven years. You looking for it seven years. You going to wait and you going to mess around and wait on them seven years and you going to get caught right in the mouth of the lion. And that's going to be a bad time. So he's going to continue 40 and two months. That's three and a half years. Go ahead and read. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God uh -huh. to blaspheme his name uh -huh. and his tabernacle Go ahead. and them that dwell in heaven. He, he blasphemed God and everything that God said. He's doing it right now, but nobody paying no attention to it. Why is it that God said the seventh day is my Sabbath? Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. And now all the churches are going to church on the first day of the week and say this is the Christian Sabbath day. That is an insult to Christ. Yeah. But the whole world is falling behind his sisters and brothers. And he blasphemed. Jesus said, I'm going to raise you up at the last day. This organization said you go to heaven right away. Yep. Jesus said the dead know nothing. This organization said they're going to be looking down on you smiling. Jesus even gave you a dietary law. And I do mean Jesus because he's the only God we ever dealt with. They told you that all you got to do is pray over it and you can eat anything. Sisters and brothers, this is a horrible thing when you look at what's being taught in churches tomorrow. 90 
nine and a half percent of it is wrong. But you wouldn't know, you know why? Because you don't read. You encourage not to read. And this is another thing, too. Go ahead and read. Seven. And it was given it to him to make war with the saints. Now, you say you're a saint. Are you prepared for this? Mm. It was given unto him to make war with the saints. Go ahead. And to overcome them. In the wind. <laughs> Ain't that something? The Lord is going to allow this to happen. Because he got to get somebody's attention. He's going to make war with the saints and he's going to win. Go ahead and read. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So you ain't going to be safe nowhere. Mm -mm. So where you going, sisters and brothers? Where you going? Right. Only thing you have to go is to the wilderness. That's the place of safety. Because the Lord going to let this man come up in this Western Europe thing under the power of the Pope. And he's going to call his sister and brother. And this is what you don't know. Go and read your history. In the name of religion, more people have been killed more than any other cause. Do you understand that? Yeah. And this guy going to put a cap on it. So the only way for you to escape it, because you will not be raptured off this earth, is to find out where the place of safety is and go there. Well, brother boy, what... What if I can't, if I'm immobile, if I'm in a wheelchair, or if I'm in traction on a bed, this God of yours will get you over there one way or another. <laughs> Why do I say that? Because he didn't leave one Israelite, hear me, not one Israelite in Egypt. And I'm pretty sure you have some Israelites that couldn't walk. And that was sick. But he brought every one of them out of it. So before this great tribulation take place, if you get this thing right, the Lord going to deliver you. Yes, sir. Let's go into Revelation, the 12th chapter, back right up to the 12th chapter. See, this is why I said this thing is worth getting this thing right. It's worth getting it right. People don't like to take the time to learn how to save themselves. People are in a hurry. Several people told me, brother, sometimes you, the lessons are short, you know, they won't sound bites. I don't need no sound bite. That's right. <laughs> I need to know what I'm doing. And the only thing, way to know what you're doing is to get you some knowledge. Right. Well, you know, the people don't have no patience. I said, they're going to have, I said, well, it's too bad. They ain't going to have no patience in the lake of fire, but they ain't coming out of it. <laughs> You better get this thing. 12 and 1. 12 and 1. Because this is talking to Israel here. Physically, mostly, and spiritual also. Because what people don't understand that when the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, it was a mixed multitude. This is a lot of my Hebrew brothers don't understand. It's going to always be a mixed multitude. Because you're going to always have people out of other nations is more comfortable with the servants of God than they are with their own nation that ain't serving nobody but Satan. Right. So what you going to do? I'm going with y'all. Yes, sir. And if you were smart, you said, come on. Because you said, no, you ain't going with me, then the Lord going to fix it. He going to send them in your place and you going to stay here. <laughs> Somebody better tell, pay attention. Yep. Revelation 12 and 1. Go ahead. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, uh -huh. a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Go ahead. And upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Uh -huh. Now, if you want to know who that woman is, is Israel. You can on your own. You can go and read Genesis 37 chapter. Talk about Jacob and his sons on your own, not today. Right. And the 12, the sun represent Jacob. The moon represent his wife. And the 12 stars represent his 12 sons, which made up the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead and read. And she being with child cried, uh -huh. travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And she was with child. What, what is this great child that come out of Israel? Jesus. This is the one. Go ahead and read. And there appeared another one in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. 
And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven uh -huh. and did cast them to the earth. Now look, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Wait a minute. Didn't we define these seven heads and ten horns out of nations? Yes, sir. And also the common market? Well, why then did he say the dragon stood before? Because the dragon is operating through these Gentile nations, sisters and brothers. Mm. The dragon, Satan, the devil is a cherub angel. You know what a cherub angel looked like? He had four faces, calf feet, six wings with eyes all over him. That didn't define him there, did it? No, it didn't. He defined him by the men that's going to represent him. Remember, he gave this beast his seat, his power, and great authority. Yes, sir. So they stood, in this case, it stood for, uh, 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 before him in the form of the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Tried to cut Jesus off. Didn't, didn't uh, uh, Herod kill all the boys trying to get him? Yep. Go ahead and read. Middle of four. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Uh -huh. And she brought forth a man child uh -huh. who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. Who's the rapture everybody off the heaven? No, no. He brought forth a man child which was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. And it's going to happen. What happened to this man child? Go ahead and read. And her child was caught up into God and to his throne. And her child was caught up into God and to his throne, sisters and brothers. And to his throne. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus is right now. He came because he had to come and die for the sins of the people because he was a sin offering. The world don't even know that. But once that happened, he finished what he was doing. He finished his three and a half years of his ministry because he had another three and a half years to deal with it. And then he went on back to heaven. Mm -hmm. But what about the woman? She didn't went through it, but at this time, we're going to jump way to the future. Let's see what this woman going to do here. Go ahead and read. And the woman fled into the wilderness. And the woman fled into the wilderness? Will she have a place prepared of God? Will she have a place prepared for God? Go ahead, of God, go ahead. That they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Now, how many years is that? Yeah. Three and a half years. The Lord have it all laid out. At that time, and we're going to show you the preparation of it. He will have this place prepared for this woman. That's those of us, sisters and brothers, that got this thing right, know the sign, and know when to move. Because he's going to have everything else prepared for. Mm -hmm. It's just like he had... The kingdom of the Father was prepared for man from the foundation of the world. But we was too stupid <laughs> to believe him and take advantage of him. Yes, sir. Prepared from the foundation of the world. Well, he's going to have this prepared. For us to be safe for that three and a half years while the rest of the world is going through holy hell. <laughs> and that defines it too because he said in the name of righteousness he shall destroy many holy hell that ain't no miss me <laughs> that's looking when you get in this wilderness ain't nobody going to do nothing to you no, I mean no. nobody let's go on the 91st chapter of Psalm and look at it Psalm chapter 91 and I'm talking about People been in church all their life and don't even know about this. And this is, this, this is that's the sad part about it. The Lord didn't map this thing out. He didn't tell you what's going to happen. And told you how horrible it's going to be. Then he turned around and told you, I got a place for you to go though. Now, you get there, ain't nobody going to do nothing to you. But if you don't read, or either your preacher was not sent by God. You don't know about this. It's all that simple. You don't have a clue of what's going on. But this is going to happen. Psalm 91 and verse 1. Go ahead. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High yes, sir. shall it's, abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes, sir. It's going to be the secret place of the Most High. It's secret right now. Don't nobody know about it. Mm-mm. And you're going to abide under the shadow of the Most High. Go ahead and read. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Go ahead. My God in whom in him I will trust. Uh-huh. 
Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler uh -huh. and from the noisome pestilence. He's going to deliver his servant, sisters and brothers. This is his woman we read about in Revelation 12 chapter. Go ahead and read. He shall cover thee with his feathers uh -huh. and under his wings shall thy trust. Go ahead. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Now that is your shield and buckler. Mm. The Lord's truth, sisters and brothers. You know about this thing. Mm. And you know his law and you walk in it and you know his sign. So you know how, when to move. So what's going to deliver you? His truth. That's mm -hmm. your shield and buckler. But don't nobody deal with the truth, so you ain't got no shield and no buckler. Mm. You a butt naked. Yep. It's all that simple. That's it. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, uh -huh. nor the arrow that fly by day. Now you ain't going to be afraid of none of that. There's a big mm -hmm. wall going on outside. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness. All the famines and diseases that come from war, you ain't going to be afraid of none of that. Go ahead and read. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Uh -huh. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, uh -huh. but it shall not come nigh thee. You going to be in the place of safety? The Lord going to have you to see all of this. I don't know whether by TV or whatever. But you're going to be able to see it. He said a thousand going to fall at your right hand and 10,000 at your left. But ain't none of it going to come near you. Mm -mm. They ain't going to shoot one shot over there. Just like when uh, uh, Sennacherib had Hezekiah, had, uh, uh, Hezekiah caged, in. caged in. Tell me what are you going to do. The Lord told the prophet, you go out there and you tell Hezekiah, he ain't going to catch no Block against the city, right. he ain't going to build no bank, he ain't going to shoot one arrow right. over the wall and send one angel out there and kill 185,000 souls. <laughs> this is the God that we're dealing with, sister right. and brother. Know him and trust in him, do what he said, and you will be in the place of safety. Yes, sir. He said, look, look here. Thousand going to fall at thy side. 10,000 at thy right hand. But it shall not come near thee. Go ahead and read. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. But you will be all, but you will be able to see it all. Yes, sir. What happened to the wicked? Only with your eyes will you be able to look and see what's gonna happen. Go ahead and read. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. But we live in the Lord, sisters and brothers. We walk the Lord. We eat the foods that he said eat. Yes, sir. We don't eat the foods that he said don't eat. Mm -mm. We worship on the day that he said worship on. Mm -hmm. We keep the law that he said keep. Yes, sir. That means we live in the Lord. He's our habitation. <laughs> That's right, brother. This is what he's telling you here. Go ahead and read. There shall no evil befall thee. None. Go ahead. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. How is it that that's not going to happen to you? Right here. Go ahead and read. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. Because he's going to give his angels charge over you. To keep thee in all thy ways. Uh-huh. To keep thee in all of thy ways. I mean an angel going to be there. He ain't going to let one bullet come across. No, no. Ain't nothing going to happen. But this is the way the Lord operate. It just didn't, it's just not going to happen then for the first time. It's always like this. Mm -hmm. Give you a case in point. Let's go into Exodus, the 23rd chapter. Exodus chapter 23. See, I done seen this. And now, he ain't going nowhere. The Lord said, according to what I covenant, what covenanted with you when I brought you out of Egypt, my spirit, spirit is still among you. Yes, sir. He's still here. He's still here. Now look what the Lord said. We're going to read one verse. 23, chapter, uh, Exodus chapter 23, and we're going to read verse 20. It's the same thing he's going to do in the future. He's already done in the past. If you want to know how the Lord going to operate tomorrow, see what he did yesterday. Yes, sir. Verse 20, read it. Behold. I sent an angel before thee uh -huh. to keep thee in the way. I sent an angel before thee to keep you in the way. Go ahead and read. And to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. And to bring you to the place which I have prepared. Didn't the woman go to a place which was prepared for her? Yes, sir. He did it before. He going to do it again. Yeah, he is. And it's all going to take place on this earth. I don't care how holy you call yourself. I don't care how much you shout and fall out and kick. 
<laughs> I don't care how many foreign languages that you can't understand that you speak. <laughs> if this angel don't go before you, you in trouble. It's all that simple, sister and brother. You are in trouble. So now, so when he say he's going to send his angel before you to take and, take and keep you in the way to the praise he prepared, that ain't no new thing. That's an old thing. Yes, sir. Now let's go back. I should have told you to keep, a, uh, keep your finger. Let's go back to Revelation 12 chapter. Revelation chapter 12. Because sisters and brothers, this thing is laid out. That's why... That, that's why the Lord said, get wisdom and knowledge, but with all your getting, get understanding. That's why all of these years, 40-something years, and I feel just like I was the day that I walked into. Because it just keeps getting better. Because I keep seeing more and more. And I know this thing is a thrown stove throw away. I intend to see it. People think I be joking when it's, brother, you know, you're getting old. Eh? You must not start thinking about funeral arrangements. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm finishing this thing. That's it. I have prayed to the Lord. As the Lord, you started this big work by my hand. Let me finish it. Yes, sir. And I intend to do so. And I'm older than most of you in here. Now, if I'm going to finish it, then you should be able to finish yes, it. Yes, sir. Revelation 12, and we're going to start at verse 14. Revelation 12 and 14. So the woman uh, 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 fled to the wilderness. Go ahead and read. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, uh -huh. that she might fly into the wilderness. Go ahead. And to her place where she is nourished for a time. And times and half a time go from the face of the serpent. Now, because that's who the serpent's going to be operating. He's the one that the Lord is letting pull his trigger on this thing. That's why I said the people that's working got their seat and power and great authority from him. Yep. So he's going to get you off there, and you're going to be in there for three and a half years. This time it said times, times and a half, just like yes, it sir. said in Daniel's, didn't it? Because we're talking the same time, sisters and brothers. We are talking the same time. Go ahead and read. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Uh-huh. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Go ahead. And the earth helped the woman. Now, and it's, the probably, it's probably this flood is an army, sisters and brothers. Right. But the Lord is going to do something. He's going to keep this army from catching you. <laughs> he said, earth help the woman. Whether this is a, 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 a symbolic or whether it is an actual, either way it go, it's going to happen. Yes, sir. Finish that. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Uh -huh. And the dragon was robbed with the woman. Now, when he couldn't get the woman, he was mad at her. <laughs> so yeah. look what he did. And the dragon was robbed with the woman. Go ahead and read. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. So he turned on our seed. Who is our seed? Go ahead and read. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. See, you got some people. That's keeping the commandments of God, sisters yes, and brothers. Sir. And the testimony of Jesus. They just don't know enough about this wilderness. Right. Some way. I don't know how they miss this. Mm. Wow. But they say, we are going to keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus. Regardless of what is done to her. Yes, sir. So what is? Satan's going to turn on them. And those are the saints, sisters and brothers, that he's going to make war with and prevail. Yeah, he is. He is going to prevail. So when the Lord say he's going to bear you on eagle's wings, that don't mean you're going to have some great big wings we're going to sit on. That's talking about his power. But then he did this before. Let's go into Exodus, the 19th chapter. Exodus chapter 19. Because sisters and brothers, this got to be, no, this got to be known. This got to be understood. Yeah, you got to yeah. eat and drink this. You got to make the Lord your habitation. Yes, sir. Otherwise, you're going to get caught in a condition that's right up on the world right now that if you don't have no knowledge, you will not survive. No, you won't. Exodus 19, and we're going to start in verse 1. Exodus 19 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, 
The same day came then to the wilderness of Sinai. Uh-huh. But they were departed from Rephidim and would come to the desert of Sinai and they pitched in the wilderness and there Israel camped before the mount. Lord took Israel the same way that he going to take us when, he t- when, when we go back. Go ahead and read. And Moses went up unto God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain saying, Thus shall thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel. Uh-huh. You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. So you saw that how I destroyed the Egyptians. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and read. And I bear you on eagle's wing. Uh-huh. And brought you unto myself. And how I bear you on eagle's wing and brought you unto mm. myself. That's what he's going to do when he takes us back. That's why he said, woman was given the wings of an eagle. Yes, sir. In other words, with his power, he's going to bring you. And ain't nobody going to be able to lay a finger on you. Satan's going to send all his minions out there. But remember, Satan is the created, and God is the creator. Yes, sir. Created can't beat the creator. The servants of the created is inferior to the servants of the creator. So just like he bows on eagle's wings, when we come out of Egypt, he's going to do it when he takes us back. All you got to do is know this thing. Walk as his laws and statutes. See, sometimes you might be around when good has come, when good comes. But if you ain't clean enough, you can't take advantage of it. Now let's go into Hosea, the second chapter. Because the law, that's why a lot of people that's in Israel now, some of the brothers and sisters over there, they're going to have to come out of there. Yeah, they are. Because if they don't come out of there, they're going to be destroyed. Because the Lord is going to flatten Jerusalem and Israel. He's going to run everything out. He's going to take a broom and sweep all uncleanliness out of it. And ain't nobody going to be in there. Not even Israel. He's going to take you through the wilderness. Just like he did in Egypt. He run over with Brother asked me, brother, when you going to go to the homeland? <laughs> I said, when I'm a part of the sovereign government. In other words, when I'm the ruler, I'm a part of the ruling people, not the one that's being ruled. How am I going to go over there and be ruled over by Edom? I don't know Edom. At least I know this Gentile over here. I can't beat him, but I know his habits, so I know how to stay out of his way. I don't know how to circumvent that cat over there. No, I don't. Over here, I'm a rabbit in the, in the woods. Out over there, I'm a rabbit in the open desert. <laughs> don't know how to protect myself. Until the Lord come, I'm staying right here. <laughs> Jose chapter 2. <laughs> and we're going to start reading at verse 14. Jose 2 and verse 14. This is what the Lord told me. This is the same woman, which is Israel. This is who she represents. Go ahead and read. Therefore, behold, I will lure her and bring her into the wilderness Uh and speak comfortably into her. That's what he's going to do. Go ahead and read. And I will give her her vineyards from thence Uh and the valley acorn for a door of hope. Uh And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. See, look. The Lord said, look, he's going to lure us into the wilderness. He's going to take us to the wilderness, and now he's going to give us our vineyard. We're going to know, look, sisters and brothers, everybody in here come from somewhere in Israel. Right. Everybody in here have a plot of land that the Lord gave to their fathers. And he was so strict about it until you could not sell this land because it was the inheritance of the fathers, and the children are going to get the land. Right. That's like when Jeremiah's cousin wanted to get rid of his land. He couldn't sell it to nobody, mm-hmm. his nephew, but his uncle. Because they come out the same tribe. He took the deed, put it in the ball, and buried it in the ground. Somebody in here might be the one that picks up that, that, that ball and says, okay, this is my plot. Mm. This is what the world don't understand. The world don't want to understand it because the world has been taught they're going to heaven and leave this earth. No, you ain't going nowhere. 
You, go, you got a plot here. Yeah, you do. So he going to give you your vineyards while you're in the wilderness. So when you come up out the wilderness, you're going to know exactly where you're supposed to be, and that's where you're going. What verse was that? That was in the 15. Go ahead and read. And it shall be at that day, said the Lord, that thou shalt call me Isha, uh -huh. and shall call me no more Bela. You know what Isha mean? My husband. Because the Lord is going to marry Israel. He divorced us. He said, I'm going to marry you. That's what you, no people, un, nobody understand the term, the marriage of the lamb. He used to be our husband. But we fired him. Yeah, we did. And he has been hacked off about it ever since. And another lesson, I'll show you how hacked off he is. So we ain't going to call him just bail out. We're going to call him my husband. Go ahead and read. What verse? 17. Uh-huh. For I will take away the names of Baalim out of thy mouth. All these pagan names. Go ahead and read. And they shall no more be remembered by their name. Uh-huh. And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field. Uh -huh. And with the fowls of heaven. Uh -huh. And with the creeping things of the ground. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth. Uh-huh. And I will make them to lie down safely. Now, what is this covenant going to make with the beasts of the field and the fowls and the snakes and everything? He is going to take you back to pre-flood days in the days of Adam. Well, animals don't attack animals no more. Animals don't attack people anymore. Snakes don't bite nobody no more. Mm. You don't have to worry about nothing. He said, I'm going to make this peace with them. Yes, brother. sir. You could go out to Brookfield Zoo and jump over there and play with the lions and tigers. They ain't going to do nothing to you then. I'm looking for that. Go ahead and read. And I will betroth thee into me forever. That's betrothed. That's betrothed me promise, but really it should have been I will marry you to me forever. Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about here. Go ahead and read. Yeah. I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness uh -huh. and in judgment Go ahead. and in loving kindness and in mercy. Uh -huh. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness and thou shalt know the Lord. Now that's when you're going to know the Lord. You're going to really know who he is, sister. Because yeah. you're going to be in a place that is desert now. Mm. Can't nobody inhabit it. They tried everything. They're going to irrigate it. They can't do nothing. Plant trees, they just die. Because the Lord is preserving this big desert land over there in the Middle East, what we call. Some people say Sinai Peninsula, that's where Moses them went. Some say in Arabia, either way, wherever it is, the Lord know where it is. And he ain't going to send me to no bogus vacant lot. <laughs> he going to prepare. Didn't he say the place which I prepare? Yes, sir. Let's go into Isaiah, the 35th chapter. Isaiah 35. See, because you got to believe in this God, sisters and brothers. Yeah, you if you can. don't believe in him, you can't serve him. No, you can't. So when the Lord brings us back, it's going to be ready. Because the Lord is, is, is a God of preparation. He's going to take you where he wants you to be, and when you get there, he's going to be ready to receive you. 35 and 1, Isaiah chapter 35, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Okay, go ahead. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. That's going to be waiting on us. Go ahead and read. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Ain't that something? All of a sudden, the desert is going to start blossoming. Things going to start going on in the desert that man ain't, they're going to look for it, but the Lord ain't going to let them deal with it. Mm -mm. Or either he's going to hide it from them. I've always wondered, I said, but when they start blossoming and reeds and vegetation, right away this man going to want to go over there and throw some condos on it. <laughs> <laughs> now that's one thing, I'm going to let you know one thing I've been wondering. How is he going to keep them from doing that? He going to do it though. But go ahead and read. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. Uh huh. The glory of Lebanon shall be given into it. We are the glory of Lebanon, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon. Uh huh. They shall see the glory of the Lord 
and the excellency of our God. We're going to see it, sister and brother. See him because he's going to be there. Skip down to verse 10. Verse 10 and go ahead. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their head. We are the ransom of the Lord, sisters and brothers. We are. But let's back back up. I'm missing too much. Back yeah, up to verse 5 and go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Uh-huh. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. I know this is spiritual, but also I believe it's physical too. I think whatever helmet you got, once you step off in, this, in, in that wilderness, it is gone. It's over. <laughs> go ahead and read. Then shall the lame man leap uh -huh. as in heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. Go ahead. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. All you got to do, if you lame and crippled, get to the wilderness. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to leap. If you dumb, can't talk, when you get there, you're going to probably talk yourself to death. Because <laughs> it said waters shall break out and streams in the desert. Go ahead and read. And the parched ground shall become a pool. Uh -huh. And the thirsty land springs of water. Go ahead. In the habitation of dragons, where each lake shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Boy, ain't that something? Mm. This is a desert. This is what we're talking about. Go ahead and read. And in highway shall be there. Uh -huh. A way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. That's why I say you got to be clean. Your God is holy. You got to be holy. Because the place that you're going is called the way of holiness. Yeah, Go ahead is. and read. The unclean shall not pass no, over it. No, sir. But it shall be for those, the wayfaring men. Uh-huh. Though fools shall not err therein. Then once you get there, if you get there, if you're a fool, you're going to be, all of a sudden, you're going to be have some sense. Because <laughs> you ain't going to err with that in. It's the place of the wayfaring men, the travelers. Go ahead and read. No lion shall be there. Uh huh. No any ravenous beast go shall go up their own. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. That's us, sisters and brothers. We will be the redeemed. The Lord then redeemed us. And that's where we're going to walk there. You ain't worried about no beast and no lion or nothing there to attack you. No, you ain't. Go ahead and read. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their head. Uh huh. They shall obtain joy and gladness. And sorrow and singing shall flee away. You ain't gonna have no sorrow, more of that. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. And sighing. You ain't gonna have no more trouble, sister and brother. Because we will be the ransom. He has ransomed us. He's taken us into this place of safety that he's gonna prepare for us. And we ain't gonna be sighing and one. We gonna be rejoicing. The Lord, these are the people that's gonna get there. Before the great tribulation. Let's go in Isaiah the 41st chapter. Because the Lord wrote all this good stuff. And don't nobody read it. You're a New Testament Christian. You don't know about all this good stuff. You're going to be over here. Either hiding. Or being stamped with, some, with the mark of the beast. When you could be laying over in this wilderness. Eating grapes and vegetation. And probably laying up in a cool stream water. Cooling off. Instead of running for your life. Right. And the only reason you're doing it because you ain't got no knowledge. Because the Lord said, and you don't know no truth. So therefore, you don't have no shield and buckler. Just think about it, sisters and brothers. Isaiah 41 and verse 17. We're going to start at verse 17. 41 and 17. Okay, go ahead. When the poor and needy seek water and there is none, uh -huh. their tongue faileth for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. No, go ahead. I will open rivers in high places uh -huh. and fountains in the midst of the valley. Go ahead. I will make the wilderness a pool of water uh -huh. and the dry land springs of water. He said, don't worry about it. I'm going to give you all the water you can drink. Go ahead and read. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shitter tree, and the myrtle, and the tree, and the oil tree. And I will send the desert the fir tree. And the pine and the box tree together. He said, I'm going to do all of that stuff. You got the people over there some years back tried to plant that. They plant them and the Arabs come and tear them up. <laughs> when the Lord do this in his place of safety, ain't nobody going to tear them up. Go ahead and read. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord have done this. Uh -huh. 
and the Holy One of Israel have created it. So when we see that system, brother, we're going to know who did that. The world going to know, but they ain't going to be able to deal with it. Only the ransom and the ones that's right in the eyes of the Lord and the ones that's clean. Find out about this truth. Walk in it. Throw opinions over your shoulder because there ain't no room for opinion in the word of God. Mm -mm. There's only the word of God. That's it. So what happened is it had made it a point of debate. There is no debate. Mm -mm. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. And we're going to start at verse 1. 43 and verse 1. Go ahead. But now thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, uh -huh. fear not. For I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. He said, I want you to, don't fear. He said, I'll redeem you. I didn't call you by your name. You are mine. Verse 3. And go ahead. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Uh -huh. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopian sea before thee. He said, look, I gave people away for y'all. Go ahead and read. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable. And I have loved thee. Therefore, I will give men for thee and people for thy life. And people are going to find that out, sisters and brothers. They thank the Lord and cast us away. Anybody do anything they want to us and don't happen, don't nothing happen, they're going to find out. Payday is coming. Yeah, it is. Go ahead and read. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east uh -huh. and gather thee from the west. Go ahead. I will say to the north, give up. Uh -huh. And to the south, Keep not back. Uh -huh. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. I mean, wherever they are, I want them here and I want them now. I believe every word of this system. Yes, sir. I believe every word of it. He said, I want you to bring my son and my daughters. Y'all done did them bad long enough. Yep. Skip down to verse 14. Verse 14 and go ahead. Thus said the Lord, your Redeemer, uh -huh. the Holy One of Israel. Go ahead. For your sake I have set the ba sent the Babylon and have brought down all their nobles. He says, for your sake, Israel, I have sent the Babylon and I have brought down all their nobles because of what they did to you. Go ahead and read. And the called den whose cry is in the ships. Go ahead. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. He says, I want you to know this is your King talking. This is Jesus talking, sister and brother. He is the one that's going to sit on the throne of David. He is the one. Skip down to verse 18 and go ahead. Remember ye not the former things, neither to consider the things of old. Go ahead. Behold, I will do a new thing. Uh -huh. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? Uh -huh. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He's this a new thing. He said, now I made, I hit a rock and brought some water out for Moses then. They drank. Right. But now this time, I'm going to put rivers all over the deck. Right. He said, y'all ain't seen nothing like this. This is a new thing here. Go ahead and read. The beasts of the field shall honor me. Uh -huh. And the dragons and the owls. Because I get water in the wilderness. Uh -huh. And rivers in the desert. Go ahead. To get drink to my people, machos. He said, even the animals in the desert go on to me. When I start putting water out there for my children, go ahead and read. This people have I formed for myself. This people have I formed for myself. Go ahead and read. They shall show forth my praise. They're the one that's going to show forth my praise. Can't nobody else do it. That's why everybody's going to heaven, because they can't do it. That's why Satan is in hell, because they can't do it. Right. Barbecuing people, because they can't do it. Right. That's why the majority of the people are going to be in church tomorrow on Sunday because they cannot show forth the praise of the Lord. Only we can do that. That's right, brother. We were chosen to do it. <laughs> and me for one, I will not abdicate my role. No, sir. It's all that simple. That's why it's an embarrassing to me somebody going to come and try to debate me over with Christianity. <laughs> Just like a college kid, a college student tr debating with a pre-grammar school child. <laughs> you can't even communicate. And the Lord letting us know, just like he did it in the old days, he's going to do it in the new. Yes, 